Hello everyone. This is fun. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So that's me. It's a little bit about me. Um, okay. So what I'm going to talk to you a bit about today is me and my experience with school and. I'm going to kind of tell you some stuff that I wish I knew a few years ago. Uh, so, put your hand up if you are in the middle of doing your GCSEs or have done your GCSEs. Okay, so, and the rest of you, does anyone, does anyone not have GCSEs in their lives? No one. Oh, you? Yeah, because I'm from here. Oh, where are you from? Uh, France. Ah, okay, well. You've got a better school system. <laughs> so, okay, so I don't know what a lot of you might find, but uh, I found throughout my school life, um, it was basically just everything was leading up to GCSEs and then everything was leading up to A-levels, and then university, and no one was really very good at giving any guidance, and I had no idea what I was gonna do, how I was going to do it, but I, was, I guess I was just going to have to figure it out as I went on. Um, so I picked my GCSEs, it was pretty easy to pick, because there's quite a big um, range of them. And then, as I was doing GCSEs, they obviously start telling you that you need to start picking A-levels. And there are only three, which I don't know, does anyone else find it really difficult, or have found it, or a bit scared about choosing A-levels? Anyone? No, you will be. <laughs> so this is kind of it's not moving. So this is kind of what I was facing. So none of my parents are British, so they had no idea how to help me, and my school was pretty useless. So people were basically just telling me choose the subjects you enjoy most. I've always pretty much just enjoyed like every subject, which has always made my life very difficult for this reason. Then people were telling me, just choose the subjects you're best at. I've pretty much been equally good at lots of different subjects. So that didn't make my life any easier. Then, what career do you want to do? Do it that way. I don't know what career I want to do. Like I said, I've always enjoyed lots of different things. So, I was just so confused and I had no clue what to pick. And I just didn't really know what to do. So, I started thinking and I was like, okay, well, why don't I take a year, try out loads of different careers, and then I can find my way backwards, and then choose A-levels that are best suited to me. Because what I was really scared about is I was really scared about getting like stuck, about choosing three random A-levels, then that puts me onto a certain degree, and then I'm put onto a certain career path, and then that's it, like there's no going back. What if I get to that point and then I'm like, oh wait, I want to be a doctor and then I've got to go back and retrain. That's what I was like so scared about and I just wanted to avoid that. Anyway, my parents thought I was crazy, but they finally, I did year 12 and then they finally let me leave and yes, I'll tell you a bit later. This doesn't work. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I've never experienced the outside world. I have no idea what's out there. All they tell you about is lawyer, doctor, I don't even know what else, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and that's it. They don't even tell you all the different job roles. How can I possibly make a huge life decision? And that's as well, they keep like, they make it into such a big thing. This is the biggest decision of your life. And I had no idea what to pick. So, Okay, these are the three things I'm going to be talking to you about. Doesn't make much sense here, but it will make sense later. One, you don't know what you don't know. Think about it. <laughs> Next, apprenticeships and other routes. There's not only one route, there are literally millions of different things you can do. And three, find a mentor. Okay, right, before we start, I put some things on your table. Uh, the post-it notes are for if there's any like little anything that resonates with you, stuff you want to remember, like little quotes and I don't know, whatever, whatever you want, things to write, to write down. And the careers, uh, I will tell you about a bit later. Okay, you don't know what you don't know. This is um, to do with yourself and to do with careers. 
Can anyone tell me what they think I'm kind of talking about here? Does anyone have any clue? Yes? Don't know. You say you want to do finance, you actually know what it is. Do you want to take this? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> tell me. Say you, you think you want to do um, computer science, but you don't actually know what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, basically that's exactly it. So, you don't really know. You think you know things, like you can say, oh, I want to be a lawyer. What makes you think you want to be a lawyer? Maybe because you watch some TV shows and you're like, oh, I want to be like that. But like, you don't actually know what that means, right? You don't know what, like, you don't know what's involved in something. So these were things that I thought I knew about myself and that I knew about careers, and then that I later found out actually were not at all what I thought. I used to always say like, oh, I don't like maths, I hate maths, maths is my worst subject. I've actually pretty much always enjoyed maths, so I don't even know what I was thinking. Uh, I always thought I would hate coding, and then I was literally forced not forced, but people kept telling me, you've got to try coding. I tried it, and guess what? I actually, like, literally, I really enjoyed it. Uh, careers. I never thought I could be a vet because I'm very squeamish. Uh, I, tried it out. I tried it out, and I, it was amazing, and it was so interesting. Um, I never thought I could be a banker because I don't like maths. Guess what I found out? Banking. Barely of any of it is actually to do with maths. Uh, there are so many careers within banking, and even being a banker itself, it's not even really maths. So, you don't even know what's out there. Don't make assumptions on things before you actually know. So, here are some careers I've learned about in the past year, so that I didn't even know about. One of them is a neuropsychologist. So, they basically work in like a ward with people who've had traumatic brain injuries, and they're assessing them and they're helping them to get back into the normal world and um, yeah, they study the relationship between brain function and what an individual does and how they behave. So this is like a kind of crossover between being a, like a psychotherapist, like a counsellor, being like a researcher, being like a doctor. There are so many jobs that interconnect everywhere. So say you always say, okay, so I always used to say I wanted to be uh, like a psychotherapist. Then I found out I actually didn't really want to do that. So then I was like, okay, I'm not, not going to study psychology. I could have been like a neuropsychologist. I could have been a youth worker. I could have been, there are so many careers. Just because you enjoy something, there's not one career just in what you enjoy. There are so many. So go out and explore it. Another thing is a housing options officer. I actually was gonna, I never even thought I would do anything like this. And then I was speaking to someone and they were telling me about this and I was like, wow, this is actually so interesting. And I was actually gonna apply to become a housing officer, which is so weird and so random, but like it actually really aligned with what I enjoyed and what I was passionate about, about that career. And then I'm gonna ask you all one fact to tell me about what that career is. You go, I'm gonna pass. What was he? What was he being like that about it? Like? It's a classic, isn't it? Classic. All right, your time is up. Finish, stop. Okay, right. I'm gonna pick you randomly on the spot and put you on the spot and scare you. You, um, tell me your career. What's it called? As, uh, Stand up, sir. A geotechnical engineer and is a branch of civil engineering concerned with the engineering behaviour of earth materials. Do you know what that is? Does that make sense to you? Kind of. Have you ever heard of this career before? No. Would you, could you see yourself ever doing this career? I, I'm going to box, I'm guessing you <laughs> Cool, <laughs> thank you, sit down. Someone else, you. What's um, your career? It's a landscape architect and it's a person, uh, no, the practice of landscape architecture includes site analysis, land planning, plant, planting design, and storm water management, as well as design. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard of it before? Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> would you, could you ever imagine yourself doing this? Probably not. 
Okay, but at least you know what it is and you know that it exists. Anyone else? I'm gonna pick on someone for that. I can't, I don't have to go on. You! So a forensic accountant is like a financial detective. A forensic what? Accountant is like a, a forensic accountant. Is like a financial detector and they work out if fraud has happened. That is very cool. So yeah, it's uh, so if you wanted to be an accountant but you were like, no, that's boring. You can be a forensic accountant, which is like a detective, and you found out if you find out people have done like fraud and stuff. Cool. Did you know this existed? No. Would you imagine yourself doing it? No. Cool. Uh, asthma. <laughs> Okay, cool. So my thing is an aerospace engineer, and it, an aerospace engineer, like it says, a seven four seven has more than six million parts. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is an aerospace engineer? Okay, I guess oh, that's a fact. They make like planes and rocket ships. Cool. Yeah. Did you know it existed? Yeah. Do you want to do it? Could you imagine yourself doing it? Maybe. Cool. Learn more about it. Okay. Down volunteer for three. Start up, Jack. So, I am also known as a PP specialist. <laughs> PPC specialist. <laughs> Paper fix specialist. So, I get um, charged, um, I, I basically make adverts for people using like AI stuff. So, you know, on YouTube, you get that ad for like, a hole in the Bahamas or whatever. Wherever you're searching previously, I get paid for the AI and presenting it to you, and I get paid like one fee or something. Like that, <laughs> clicks. Did you know it was I mean, I think so, yeah. Did you, like, all these things that we see happening all around us, there are people behind everything. There is, like, there is people. There is people. There are people doing everything. You see the weird ad for the Bahamas. The other day, I was talking to my friend about a specific lipstick. I wasn't even on my phone. And then after the ad for that lipstick came up on my phone, there is someone behind that engineering all of that. Exactly. Thank you very much. Can you imagine yourself doing it? Sure. Because I'm like, me and my parents probably all need to be a dog. Uh, one more. Who wants to be the last person? You. Not all the eating boys. Okay, so I got a youth worker, and a youth worker is a person that works with young people to engage them in informal education. What does that mean? So like, uh, you work with people between the ages of 11 to 25 to like in community projects to try and get them to do things like extracurricular, like outside of school. Cool, does that interest you? Yeah, but not like as a job or more important theory. I have that as well. There are loads of things, so all the things that I've like come across, there's loads of times that I've come across stuff where I'm like, wow, that's actually so interesting. I can't imagine doing it, but it's still cool to learn about. And you can always do things like on the side, volunteer, yeah. Is, has anyone, okay, put your hand up if you feel like you've learned something. But well, I'm not finished though, by the way. Okay, cool, good. There are so many careers out there that no one knows about. Why aren't we being told about them? It makes me so annoyed. I want to be a neuropsychologist. I mean, I don't, but like, <laughs> what if you want to be a neuropsychologist, but you don't even know what it is? You didn't even know it existed. So then you just go do a random degree in psychology and you become a psychologist and you hate it when you could be enjoying doing this. Next, how did I learn about these careers? Why one, talking to people. I did something called an informational interview. That is, I talked to someone in a specific career. I talked to them for about an hour and I interviewed them. How did you get there? Do you enjoy it? What advice do you have? What advice would you have for yourself 30 years ago? Not 30, they're not that old. Maybe they are. Um, <laughs> and you inter I interview them and I learn all about them and their career and I make notes. And then I have this whole dossier of careers now, and I learned about things I never even knew existed. Way two, trying it out. So I did loads of different work experience. Uh, so like what I'm saying about the vet, and Eleanor was saying it, I always thought I might want to be a vet, because always, I've always loved animals. But then I thought, no, I'm too squeamish, I can't. So then I tried it out, loved it. Turned out I didn't want to do it, but I could have done it. Trying things out is the best way forward. Okay, way one, talking to people. 
People are so, so happy, generally, not always, to talk to you and to help you if you reach out to them. You'd be surprised how little people actually reach out to you. And if someone does, like, they want to help you. So just reach out to people. Say someone, you, just found out about being a data analyst and you think, hmm, I'm really interested in that. Go look on LinkedIn, search up data analysts, look for people you know who are data analysts and just go speak to them and ask them, can I take five minutes to speak to you about your job? They'll probably say yes, 100%. Just do it, just go out and talk to people. Make your own opportunities, right? Things aren't just gonna come to you. Things may come your way and if they do, grab them, but you've got to make your own opportunities, okay? You've got to like go out there, put out into the world what you want and go for it. I know it sounds stupid, but I'm actually so serious. I've got this Microsoft apprenticeship because I wanted it and I went out and I asked people, I went on LinkedIn and I, and I, asked, um, I asked this girl, who's now my best friend, if I could ask her about apprenticeships. And she said yes, and she said come do work experience with me at Microsoft. So I went, and then I decided I wanted to do an apprenticeship. You make your own opportunities, okay? Then, feel the fear and do it anyway. This is a really cool quote from a book, which I have started to read but I haven't finished, but to be honest, it's more just the title that's actually really helped me. So, everyone feels fear. I especially have always really felt fear. Um, like, you don't want to do things because of fear. Fear really controls our lives. It's always going to be there, there's no point trying to ignore it. Just feel it, and then just do it anyway. I don't really like talking in front of people, and I'm talking in front of all of you, because just do it anyway, right? What, like, everyone has fear, just go out and do it. And this is a good book if you want to read it, it's a really good book. I haven't actually finished it, so, but I've heard it's very good. Right, way two, trying it out. Narrow once you know. That means, don't say, I don't want to be an aerospace engineer because I don't like planes. Go and try it, and then you can decide if you don't want to do it, okay? Don't just narrow things just from thinking you know things, because you don't know anything. Not in a condescending way, but like, you genuinely just don't know, so go and try it. Don't discount any options, and you can't really know until, unless you've tried it, okay? Oh, by the way, this has been my experience, so obviously everyone is going to have their own experiences. This is just what I wish people had told me when I was younger, so obviously, Take it your own way. Anyway, apprenticeships and other routes. There are literally so many options. This is the, the method we all know. GCSEs, I don't put GCSEs, but GCSEs, then A-levels, then university, then you have a career, your life. It really does not have to be like that. That's what the majority of people do, but it really does not have to be like that at all. There are literally so many options. One, I hope this is not confusing, I did this on the plane yesterday, on my phone. So, A-levels. Instead of A-levels, these are some of the many options that you can do, which are equivalent to A-levels. Put your hand up if you actually have heard of these. Alright, that's actually pretty good. That's good. I didn't even know about any of these things. A B-Tech, does anyone know what B-Tech is? Tell and tell me. Yeah. It's like an A-level, but it's not, so if you get B-Tech in my subject, I'm not going to say B-Tech, but like, you would get them in A-level, so it's stuff like, you have, you get a B-Tech in my course of You can get B-Tech, B-Tech, okay, B-Tech is, is such like a thing where everyone's like, oh yeah, like the B-Tech thing, like it's less than, it's not less than, it's just different, it's for people who learn differently. So B-Techs are much less exams and they're more coursework, so, and I think some of them you also go out and you do things and you go on the job and stuff. And so you just, it's just learning in a different way. And it's also for people who know specific uh, careers they want to go into. So say you want to be, say you want to go into business, instead of spending your time doing A-levels, you can do business B-Tech where you'll learn on the job skills and then you can go into business. Same thing if you want to do like hairdressing. But it's a big range of things. It's another alternative. Then you've got the cash course. That is equivalent also to A-levels, and that's for, um, like, ch uh, what's the word? Like, looking after children type thing. My friend, she did the cash course. Okay, I have two friends. Two of them wanted to go to Leeds University. <laughs> yeah, only two friends. Come on, two friends, thanks. So, two friends who wanted to go to Leeds University. One of them did A-levels, 
One of them did the cash course. Guess which one got into Leeds University? The one who did the cash course, right? It doesn't mean anything. You end up in the same place. It's whatever works for you and your own learning. Apprenticeships, I'm gonna tell you a bit about that later. Then you've also got the access to higher education. Uh, I'm not gonna go into these, so look them up if you're interested. Uh, or just look them up anyway, just so you know. That's a different way to get, to get your A-levels, but not. Then, uh, so with these things, the 100 thing, kind of ignore that. I didn't get a chance to actually change that. So if you want to go to university, if you want to go to that next stage, but you don't want to do it with A-levels, you can do it with all of these things. All of these options can still get you into university. Just it's like you've got higher percentages. So A-levels, you get like, you've got like a 100% chance of getting, getting into university, obviously if you do well. And then I think, it's like different amounts, but you can still always get in, right? Um, okay, instead of going to university, you can do all of these things. The traineeship is kind of like working for free, and then it gets you into a job. And you can start your own business as well. You don't need to go to university, unless you want to. Okay, apprenticeships. Uh, so, an apprenticeship is... Pretty cool, I think. I knew nothing about them. I actually had someone. This is also about don't, um, you don't know what you don't know. I had a speaker, I think in year 10. A speaker came and he was an apprentice and he told us all about it. And I remember sitting there thinking like, okay, that's pretty cool, but like, that's just not for me. I'm, that's not for me. They'd be like, you're going straight into work. I'm too scared to do that. I don't want to do that. Guess what? I found out about apprenticeships and it literally was 100% for me. So, you're basically learning while you earn, so you get money for it, and you're learning on the job. So it's not, it's one day a week of studying in a classroom and four days of learning while you're experiencing things. So there are different levels. You've got level two, which is equivalent to GCSEs, and that's 12 months. Level three is equivalent to A levels. You can read. Um, those are all the different levels. Uh, they're all, very cool and they're basically it's like um it's like a curriculum so it's not like you're just working at a random place it's a proper curriculum so you go and you have an apprenticeship provider who's kind of like your school and they teach you one day a week and then you basically got a job the rest of the time basically that's it's very cool i'm very excited to start um these, I think, will be interesting for you guys specifically. Microsoft has got these new apprenticeships, as well as their normal ones, like business, tech, and stuff like that. They've got these things called digital skills, and they're apprenticeships for careers that don't exist yet. So, they've got, let's pick one to watch. Which one do you want to watch? Someone pick one. Top rare. That one? <laughs> Yeah? Alright. Oh, there's no sound. Never mind. Oh, is there sound? Should be. Huh? Alright. Basically, you've got these apprenticeships. These are things you can do for jobs that don't exist yet. Internet of Things. My dad works with Internet of Things. He's here. It's a bit weird, but he's. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So there's lots of different options, basically. You can look this up yourself. This is just so I can show you what's around. Um, what else? Okay, and then for the one career, you can have so many careers. You don't need to have one specific career. I have met so many people. Okay, I met someone who is a speech therapist now. And point of view, she was able to, you know, um, put data. I don't really know. But you basically learn from everything. Um, who else? Oh, so I went to this course for, it was when I was applying for my apprenticeship. I went to this free thing, which was like, it was called like getting you ready for work. And I thought it would be, everyone would be like the same people as me, like maybe grads, things like that. They were all adults, except me, except one other girl actually, who just, who was a grad. Three of them were like, 
middle-aged and they were there because they were restarting their career in something completely different. So, like, people do it and you succeed. Um, yeah, and find a mentor. So, uh, I was lucky to, by chance, meet Eleanor and she got me started on my journey and she kind of um, got me, you know, taught me how to like network, how to start um, learning the skills I needed to be out in the world of work. Um, sorry, my throat's really dry. If you, um, so finding a mentor, someone in your field of work maybe, um, that's really good because they can show you along the way and they can help you and give you tips. So you can find them on LinkedIn, wherever. Yeah, get yourself out there. It's literally never too early. So everyone, all of you, I think you all have LinkedIn. I think Eleanor made you get it. So, but you should use it. Uh, network, add, connect with random people. People will actually connect with you. Go to lectures. I went to a random psychology lecture about um, memory, which is so random, but it was so interesting. Just go, like, go to things. Speak to people. Try stuff out, research, yeah. And here are some two really good websites if you want to have a look at. Prospect is really, really good. Uh, it's got a list of all the different careers and you can go in and it can show you how you can like get to that career, like um, like what, did, what degrees you want to do, stuff like that. And Gov UK Apprenticeships is, if you're interested in apprenticeships, they've got, they list all of the different ones. Yeah? Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Is apprenticeship you're doing now a degree level apprenticeship? Sorry? Is it a degree apprenticeship or is it just a What is? The apprenticeship you're doing in Manchester. Oh, sorry, I didn't say. Mine is a level four apprenticeship, so it's a foundation degree, so it's basically equivalent to uh, the first year of uni. I shouldn't be allowed to do it because I haven't done A-levels, but I managed to let them kind of let me do it. Um, so that's two years long, and if I enjoy that, um, then I can convert that into a full degree apprenticeship. Or if I decide I want to do something else, then I can go to uni. Basically, that's the level I'm doing. But uh, Microsoft offers level three, level four, and level six. So my friend is doing a degree. She's doing a um, computer science degree. And so at the end of it, she'll have a degree and she'll have four years of work experience at Microsoft. It's pretty cool. Yeah. How do you recommend you find a mentor? So, I'd say, firstly, because you do want to be careful with, like, um, obviously because you're underage, so you want to be careful, like, trying to, like, connect with adults and stuff. Um, I'd say, first of all, use your network or that you have already. Your parents will, like, have, like, friends, people you know. Um, Definitely use Acorn, definitely use Eleanor, 100%. You guys are literally in the best place right now. You are so ahead of everyone else. Like, this is it's so good, and you're going to be so ahead later on. Um, like I said, go through LinkedIn. Um, I like go to events and stuff like that. I know you might be a bit scared to do it. I wouldn't have done it before I'd started my... But now I just go to stuff, and you meet people. And people... Do you know what? I've had, like, three different people offer to mentor me. People want to help you. People genuinely just want to help you. You can find someone who's like who can really help you along. And so I'd say use LinkedIn, use your network, and go to events and meet people through that. But be careful. Events? Sorry. So yeah. Sorry. So look on. Uh, so what I would start doing is I'd start looking through all the different careers. Go on the prospects website. They've got all the lists of careers, like every career that there is. And then start looking up things that you think might be interesting, start talking to people. And uh, well, it depends if you want a mentor in a specific area. Like say you want to become uh, a teacher, then you can find a teacher who can be your mentor. And then that way you can go specifically to events for teachers. You can go to, I don't know if there are events for teachers, um, go on Eventbrite. Eventbrite's really, really good. You can search up. They've got loads of events. Lots of them are free. Lots of them are not free, but lots of them are free. Um, and meet up.